The real tank wagons, I don't think even when they were brand new, they looked quite this good. This is certainly a very good contender for DCC Innovation of the Year. A big hello to you, it's so great to see you and I hope we find you well. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard where we've got an exclusive first look at the working decorated prototypes of the KR Models Molten Iron Torpedo Wagons. Now these are simply a vast wagon. On the scale of, you might remember, the big rail-mounted gun, the Bosch Buster, that was brought to market by another manufacturer a number of years ago now, and it really did just stand out as having a mighty presence. And that's something that these wagons do have as well. With their multi-axle, multi-bogey array, they really do have a massive presence. And to boot, KR models have managed to make them work. At least they will rotate just like the prototypes do. And this is to allow the decanting out of the molten iron once it's got from the blast furnace where it is created right to where the rolling mills are, where it's turned into other products that are used by industry such as bar or coil or hex or ingots. There's so many different things that are made at what is a vast, vast industrial site. And of course you can go and ride the system. The Appleby Frodingham Preservation Society do do brake van tours of the steelworks and it really is something that is well worth going to see if you're ever over near Scunthorpe. But without further ado and with a big big thank you to KR Models for loaning these to the channel and they literally came through the post yesterday direct from the factory in China so none of the magazines have seen them yet and I'm really really honoured to be the first to take a good close look at these molten iron torpedo wagons. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, with the full range available to browse and buy today from their UK stockists, tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Buy, sell or exchange, any age or any gauge. Call them now for the very best price. Check them out today at the link below. But I'm really excited to show you these wagons and I've got a pair of them here behind me and they really are an amazing feat of model engineering. Do they live up to the expectations that were uh, put upon them when KR Models first announced them? Well, let's take a close look. Today, thanks to the generosity of KR Models who've loaned the livery samples to the channel for an exclusive first look, we're going to be taking a look at the molten iron torpedo wagons that they announced some time ago as the perfect accompaniment to their Hunslet Bobo industrial diesels. These wagons, and the diesels too, most commonly work at Appleby Frodingham Steelworks and their use is to take molten iron from the blast furnaces to the rolling mills where it is then converted into bar, coil, ingots and all manner of other products. They have to be pretty hefty, that's a lot of weight that sits inside these torpedoes. And they also are designed such that the entire torpedo portion can rotate to allow the molten iron to be poured out. That's proven to be quite a challenge for KR models and certainly it's something that they announced from the outset that they wanted this wagon to be able to mimic that movement with the entire barrel being able to rotate in both directions on DCC. Now this is something which certainly for the UK market has not been trialled before but I'm really pleased to see that we've got not only livery samples here but I'm told that these do work as 
KR models initially announced they wanted to achieve. And I'm really interested to not only take a good close look at these, but also see them in action and see just how well that DCC control works. They are offering these as well as a DC only version, and that will be without the motor and uh, a rotating function, so you can just use them as an ordinary wagon. But on DCC, they've got this extra feature, and it really sounds like it could be something special. And dare I say it, something that would be a contender for innovation of the year. The wagons themselves do look pretty hefty. It actually reminds me a lot of the basic outline of the Bosch Buster uh, rail gun in terms of the number of axles we've actually got on the track to actually take and distribute the weight of what could be somewhere in the region probably of 100 tonnes or more of molten iron in this rotating hopper. There's also going to be an awful lot of structure and also by necessity some heat shielding to stop it from turning into one giant solid iron ingot on the way. Because of that we've got all of these wheels on the track. All four of these triple bogies look to be fairly identical. We've got uh, couplings on the end in them pockets and if I just put this model into my DCC Concepts servicing cradle just to be able to show you the underside. So we've got four of these bogies. They are actually identical and the inner ones do still have the pocket for the NEM coupling uh, and I, it doesn't really matter because you can't see that from outside. These uh, couplings are the standard slimline tension locks but you can see here that we've got an interesting insert insofar as we've got pickups from all six of these wheels and that feeds through into the motor assembly that's in this end of the wagon. Interestingly enough if I just lift this wagon out this end is actually free to turn on its own and what I'm told is that once the uh, wagon is rotating, the actual weight that's in here stops this from just being twisted off the track. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that working in the flesh. This particular livery sample is for number 57. And I understand that there's going to be at least two wagons in the pack with different running numbers. The bogey assembly is quite comprehensive. Each of these three axle uh, bogies is free to move, whilst what they are connected to is also free to move. And this means that whilst this is quite a long wagon and would in real life be incredibly heavy, it's able to traverse some quite tight curves. The only thing you're going to have to watch out for is the possibility of a bit of an overhang in the middle. The detail on the barrel is moulded as per the prototype and it's something that I think that this will benefit enormously from an application of weathering. The real tank wagons never looked this clean. In fact, I don't think even when they were brand new, they looked quite this good. And certainly very, very quickly they would become blackened, crusty, and covered in slag and all manner of other bits and pieces. Each of these ends is different. The end that is unpowered is a smaller array and we've just got an access hatch on that end and then the raised 57. It's fairly smooth sided, finished off in this kind of orange livery with the black roof. Looking at the other end we have a much larger assembly and this is where the motor and circuit board is housed. And you can see on the end the representation of a much larger personnel access port. Again, it's finished off in the orange. And if you're wondering, these markers on the side are for lining up when this barrel is in the appropriate position for the wagon to be moved. As it rotates, you can see that they move away and together. And the idea is that when they point at each other, the barrel is level with the filler uppermost. 
The filler itself is just molded in there. I think it's a separately applied piece and it certainly does have a lot of detail. But um, as far as I can tell, this top piece is not meant to move. The buffers and railings on this are actually pretty slender. Bearing in mind that this has made its way from China from the factory without the uh, provision of a box. It was actually just wrapped in bubble wrap in a box. These have actually withstood the trip pretty well. They're made of a springy plastic and they do feel quite robust, as are the personnel access steps just there on the bogey. The buffers are a little bit delicate on this example, but KR models were at pains to point out to me that this is a sample and is not an actual production sample. And I believe that the actual buffers on the finished model should be spring loaded. The rest of the wagon is a little bit utilitarian. We've got these uh, flanges on the side picked out in orange, but its party trick is yet to come. The system whereby the bogies are hinged from the plate that then hinges from the main assembly that holds the torpedo make these very, very sure-footed even through some quite undulating track work. When it comes time to operate the barrel, this is really quite easy. Just bring this up on the handset here. It's already programmed from the factory as default number three. I'm going to rotate the barrel using F1. And then I can rotate it back. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, I don't actually have the instructions for it. But I'm picking it up fairly easily with combinations of F1, F2, F3 and F4. It seems to be possible to control the barrel quite readily. All in all, this is a great model and I'm really grateful to KR Models for giving me the opportunity to show you guys this fully decorated and working sample. One criticism that I might level at it is that it really does look just too clean and that white and that orange, there is no way that that would remain looking like that for any length of time out on the prototype. And one of the things that I have fed back to them is that I do believe that factory weathered would be a great option to offer as standard because you can imagine that these would simply be crusty with slag, with dirt. They operate in some of the most harsh industrial environments and staying like this for more than five minutes is pretty much an impossibility. But this is a good base to start with and certainly that mechanism does do exactly what is billed. I'm really looking forward to the production samples and certainly pairing these up with the Hunslet Bobo. They're going to make a great winning combination and I look forward to seeing a plethora of Steelworks inspired layouts. I hope you really enjoyed today's video featuring an exclusive first look at the fully functional and decorated pre-production models from KR Models of the Molten Iron Torpedo Wagons and certainly it's been a real eye-opener seeing just what can be achieved with DCC in model form and I really look forward to seeing more innovations such as these coming through to the UK market. Of course in the bigger scales and on the continent there's already been some elements of this uh, fascinating aspect of DCC control being put to use. But here in the UK in Dubbo, I believe that this is an absolute first. And uh, you heard my prediction here that this is certainly a very good contender for DCC innovation of the year when the awards come round. So stay tuned for that. But we would really love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Just what do you think about these forthcoming models? Do leave a comment there and also once you're down there, do check out the merch store for the full range of t-shirts and hoodies, mugs and such like. And until next time, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Happy modeling.
Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support comes from Rails of Sheffield. Sell to the name you know and trust. Family-run business purchasing collections for over 50 years. From single items to lifetime collections. No collection is too small or too big. Buy, sell or exchange. Any age or any gauge. Rails will take everything locos, coaches, wagons, track work, controllers, accessories. In fact, they will take absolutely everything and certainly will not cherry pick the best items. Rails are only a phone call away. Call them now for the very best price and get instant cash payment or same day transfer. Check them out today at the link below. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, and James Beckett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.